All right, so our next stop in this uh, crazy train is to take this image we have here, and we want to add some actual 3D elements into the picture. So um, there's a bunch of different ways to do this. Uh, we're going to do it uh, kind of the roundabout way. Um, you don't have to do the Maya steps, but I want to show you the Maya steps so you're aware of them. I'm going to give you the files you'll need for it, but I want to see, I want you to see uh, how they're created. So in this Maya scene here, um, what I've done is I basically like rebuilt that environment right there. Uh, rebuilt the environment and then I placed these objects in the scene so that I can get it perfectly lined up with where they should be. Um, if I didn't do that and I just grabbed like this soccer ball and put it here, you know, it may come into a weird perspective as to where it is and then how do I get shadows and how do I get all this other stuff, okay? So uh, we have to line it up in order for this all to work. So I'm going to make a new camera just so you can see the process for this. And let me just hide all this other stuff here. Let's turn that off for now. Okay. And I'll turn that off for now too. All right, so um, I'm in my new camera, Perspective 2. Um, I need to go to my um, image plane and import that image. So for something like this, uh, which is kind of like a one-off thing where I'm not going to constantly be in and out modeling stuff, um, I don't even really set my project for Maya. Don't tell the teacher I said that, uh, but I don't. Um, it's very simple just to kind of get in there, do what I need, and then get out. And if I needed to, I could just reload this one image later down the line. Um, but realistically, I don't even really need this image for a whole lot of stuff uh, in the scene. All right, so there's the image. And if I just, just to show you, if I were just to create a um, cube, you can see that as I zoom in, the background image stays where it is. And this cube is just kind of positioned. So just to show you, if I wanted this cube to look like it's sliding down here if I line it up and then I grab this and I move it you can see that it kinda looks like it's there um, but it, for all purposes it would actually be a little bit off probably um, especially if I were to slide it like let's say along this wall like that see how it's kinda lined up and then I started sliding it you can see that here it's lined up and then there it's not alright so we gotta do a little bit of work to get this all set up so what's neat about this specific image, if I go to the properties on it, under the details, is that it actually has all the information of how this image was created, um, the camera that it was taken with, and the settings on it. So we can use that information to um, recreate that camera inside Maya. Okay. So imagine that this camera here, let me just make another object. So I have this cube here. Now imagine that this camera was at some crazy uh, perspective. So that now this cube is really distorted in how it's moving around where it really is a cube, but here it doesn't look like a cube. Okay, So we need to punch in the exact settings from this camera so that we can use that information. All right. So uh, I need to use um, this here. See, so it says Casio Computer EXZ50. So I went to DP Review, which is a website that has a bunch of camera specs. And I went down here to the sensor size because I needed to know how big the sensor was. And this is actually how big like the um, chip is that records all the information. Uh, once I figured that information out, I went to my camera. There it is. I went to my film back, and here's where I could punch in that information. So um, before they used to have just this inch one, which was kind of horrible, but now they actually have this millimeter one, so there's no conversion needed. All we have to do is type in 5.744, 4.308. 5.744, 4.308. And double check just to make sure, 7.44, 4.308. Yep. All right, and that re-automatically converted everything for us, which is cool. All right. So that took care of the aperture, and then the next step in this is I need to know um, the focal length, okay? And the focal length here is two. There's a 35 millimeter focal length, 35, 
and then there's this focal length, six, okay? This is actually what the lens was, but this is what it actually ends up being uh, digitally. So it's actually a digitally six millimeter lens. So I go up to my camera attributes, I go to my focal length here, I type in six, there we go. All right, now it, obviously my image now is like really zoomed in, okay? So I'm gonna jump back to the attribute editor, I'm gonna go to my image plane, and I'm gonna say I need you to fit to the film gate. And you'll see that those numbers from the other page here uh, punch into this area right there, all right? So now this camera should be pretty much set up so that the perspective matches um, exact-ish. It's not gonna be 100% perfect, uh, but it'll be like 95-ish percent perfect, okay? There's always some sort of number that doesn't match, especially the camera may have been at an angle. There might have been, you know, a little bit of distortion on the image. You can definitely tell that this pole kind of comes up here, and this is straight-ish. So there is some distortion happening. So for now, we're going to leave it. Um, if this was worse, we would definitely correct it uh, ahead of time. All right. So now what I need, need to do is I need to fit this image inside this plane a little bit better so I can work with it. Um, I'm going to go to View, Camera Settings, turn on my Resolution Gate, okay? And under my Render Settings here, I've actually specified my Width and Height to be the same Width and Height as that one, but I halved it, okay? So instead of 2560 by 1920, I just cut these two numbers in half, because we're going to resize it anyway, to 1280 by 960, okay? So boom, boom, those are good there. Um, so now this image fits perfectly inside of here. Now just to give me a little bit more room, I go to View, Camera Settings, and I do a vertical overscan, which just gives me a little bit more fitting here. All right. So now I'm just going to create a polygon plane. And I'm going to scale it up, and I take the divisions away. Okay. Now this is a common thing that if you were to work on a movie, they need... A CG element in there they have to rebuild this kind of thing for every scene all right so now what I'm doing is I'm just moving I'm not moving the plane and rotating the plane what I'm doing is just moving the camera okay so just like you would navigate your regular camera I'm moving it navigating it spinning it around until I get this lined up so I'm using this line here along this wall and this line here along that wall as my lining up your liner uppers It's pretty close right there. And this was actually a pretty easy shot to set up. Um, some I take, you know, quite a while to get it locked into position. Okay, there also is a bit of an angle here where this road isn't flat. So if it's not perfect, um, it's fine. It'll be good enough. All right, so there we go. So now I'm just going to go to my other perspective view and just pull this really far out, pull this really far back so that I'm lined up. There we go, okay? So there's my camera angle right there. Uh, now I could grab this edge and just nudge it over just a hair there. And that's good there. All right, <clears throat> so I'm gonna go to my modeling tools. I'm gonna insert an edge loop right about here. Okay, and I'm gonna grab this edge and I'm just gonna extrude it up. And you can see how that lines up pretty good. I may have gone a little bit too far need to scoot that back smidge now it's hard to line it up here so what I do is I activate this arrow and I jump back to that other view and then I can just use the middle mouse to line it up there we go All right so you see how this side lines up pretty close to what it actually was and if I were to create um, a cube I'll slide it along where this door is and then shove it in and then make it bigger. You can see how this perspective on the door is going to match. Oh, you can't shade it. Uh, it's going to match pretty good. All right, so right there, that's the perspective on the door. And it's pretty close. Um, I could obviously tweak it more if I needed to, but I think that's good. I don't need the door. I'm just showing you that. All right, so now this is all set up. I'm going to grab my camera. I'm going to hit S to set a key on it. Uh, so everything's locked into position. I'm going to go to my 
uh, import, and I'm going to bring in my object. So I have this old soccer ball that I want to use. All right, so here's my old soccer ball right there, and then there's a flattened out version right there. Okay, so they have keys on them, so I'm just going to grab all the stuff here, right click, delete my keys. And then I'm just going to position this, like where do I actually want this ball to be in the scene? Okay. Now as I get it close to the camera, I can look at it and say, wow, that ball looks huge. Let me just scale it down some. All right, so like right here looks like probably a good spot for the ball. Um, I'm also going to extrude this edge up here. I don't need to worry about the other edge. That one, there's a bit more of a angle there happening. So uh, that's why I extruded that one up the way I did. All right. And then the flat one, maybe I'll put the flat one way far back. Like the kid is standing over here in the corner, so I'll put it by him because he kind of looks sad. So it kind of makes sense that maybe he's a little upset that the ball is flat. There we go. Okay, so now the ball's here. Uh, this ball is here. Um, their texture should be on there. So if I hit six, you can see I have the textures. All right. So now if I were to let me just save the scene just in case it crashes. Uh, soccer ball. I'm going to make sure I save it into my work folder, into the still comp, and I'll make a new folder in here called uh, my uh, stuff. All right, now you do this process a couple times and this whole thing becomes a lot easier. It's pretty much the same setup every time. Um, so now if I were to render this, you'll see that um, it looks weird. We don't see our plane here. Because I do have a light in the scene and the light is hidden when I hit all the stuff. And we see the slit of that. So let me just add a new light in here so we can see what the light looks like. And I'll rotate it down. I'm trying to match what the lighting in the scene looks like. And it looks like there's a pretty straight down shot. Maybe a little bit like that because you can see there's a little bit more orange here than there. There's a little bit of shadow. All right, so now we can see what the scene looks like. Um, I am rendering through Mental Ray, not Maya software. And I'm just making sure perspective too, yeah. Okay, so a couple things. The one, the soccer balls aren't showing up. So let's hit five and verify they definitely are there. Perspective two. Uh, let's go to a snapshot. Yep. They're invisible. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just going to reload that texture just to verify that the texture definitely is there. It definitely is there. I'm just, I popped out, and I'm going to pull this one down because it's floating. Because um, I wanted to verify that it definitely is in the scene. And, oops. I had some options clicked on them. I'm going to turn those options back off. Okay, we'll get into what those options are in a minute. All right, there we go. So now when I render, I should see um, the soccer balls in there. There's a soccer ball. Okay. So we see the soccer ball. We see these gray areas. <clears throat> and what I need to do is I need to render out just exactly what I want. So considering what we had with the um, people that we cropped out, we have to look at that too. So in this case, we have a soccer ball. It has some reflection on it. You can kind of see the reflection there. It has a shadow. What I want to do is pull off all that. I want to pull off the reflection. I want to pull off the um, soccer ball itself. I want to pull off the shadow. Um, and if the ground was reflective at all, I'd want to pull that off too. Okay. So I'm going to grab this object here. And I'm going to go to my uh, assigned favorite materials. I'm going to put on this use background shader. And so when I do that, you'll see that it becomes kind of like a wireframe. 
And now when I render this stuff, you can see that the soccer ball now looks like it's actually on this ground. You can see there's the shadow, there's the reflection, there's the soccer ball. Okay. Now, if we were just doing this, we could probably get away with just dropping that on there and calling it a day. But we have other stuff we want to do. Okay. Uh, number one, this is reflecting in here too, and I don't really care for that. So I may want to like mask that off. But I also want to play with these things individually uh, afterwards. Maybe this, this reflection is obviously way too much. It needs to come down. The shadow is maybe a little bit too dark. It needs to come down, especially with the other shadows that are in the scene. Uh, and then the coloring of the ball may need to be adjusted also. All right, so let's play with this to see if we can get some different results. Uh, number one, I, we really don't get a big shadow from this area here. Um, if you look, there's not a whole lot of shadow happening. So I'm just going to basically straighten up this light so that my lighting happens a little bit more evenly. Let me just marquee this so we can see it. There we go. So now we have this one and we have that one. And I'm going to push this one back a little bit further just so it's in the scene uh, a bit better. Otherwise, not really a whole point to be even taking it into 3D. There we go. Now I can model those steps too and actually put the ball like on the steps if I wanted to. So now we can see the ball, we can see its shadow, we can see its reflection down there. All right, so I'm going to adjust some parameters here. Um, number one, it's not that I don't want the reflection to be as much, because uh, I don't, but I'm going to just blur it, okay? So I'm just going to take this blur up, and under the mental ray on that use background, I can blur it, and what it's going to do is it's going to blur the reflection. Okay, so now it's still there, it's just blurry. All right, now what this is going to allow me to do is I have something to work with. If I take the reflection all the way off, I have nothing to work with. So if I wanted to add a little bit of reflection in there, um, I can't do that. So here I can at least just take it down. Now I need to get just the reflection. I don't want the ball, I don't want the stuff here. I don't even want this image because I'm really done with the image. I don't even need the image anymore. Okay, so um, I'm going to grab the image the camera go to the image plane and for now I'm just gonna set the display mode to none that gets rid of it and then I'm gonna go in here and just render this again and we'll see what we get should be black and then the ball there it is okay now if I go to my alpha channel which is here this is gonna be an important thing to look at you can see what's happening inside here all right so in this case um, the black is actually reflecting into the ball let me just render the whole screen so we can see the whole screen. The black's reflecting into the ball because of how we have it set up. So I don't really need the black to reflect into the ball because that really wouldn't be how it's positioned in the scene. What I need to do is have just this. I want just the reflection. Um, I don't care about this reflection. I can just mask that out because it's so far away. And there's another reflection off to the left that I can mask out. Um, I just want to isolate this reflection from shadow and from the ball and from all the other stuff. Okay, and even the alpha channel in this case, I'm not even concerned with the alpha channel because when I go into nuke, um, this reflection is just going to be added on top of the other one. Okay. So if I go to the alpha, which is that button, you can see what this looks like. This is reflecting and it's blurry. This is reflecting and it's blurry. Um, I can grab this wall and just say uh, visible and reflections is off. Okay. That way the wall is invisible and reflections because this is actually reflecting into here. And that's what's causing that to be visible and reflections. And even visible and refractions can pop that off too. So now, if I just marquee this area, you can see how I get this nice, clean um, look. Now, there's also this white line going here, and that's the shadow. So if I, again, turn off Cast Shadows on that, that should take care of that. Yep, there we go. Okay, so now you can see that we have just the ball. Let me switch back to RGB mode. 
just the ball, its shadow, and its reflection right here. All right. So I need to isolate just the reflection. So, come on. So I'm going to grab the ball, and in the same options on this shape node under render stats, uh, I'm just going to jump down to primary visibility and turn that off. Cast shadows, turn that off. So I'm telling that ball not to cast shadows and not to have um, primary visibility, meaning that the ball won't render, but its reflection will. Okay, so you can see here, there's just the reflection. So if we go to the alpha, just that reflection. If we go to the RGB, just that reflection. Same thing here, um, just assuming whatever happens here is happening there too. Oops, it's not, because I didn't click that ball. That's what happens when you assume stuff. So no cast shadows, no primary visibility. Cool. All right. So now they both should be good. Okay, we definitely see the reflection here. We can see the reflection there. Now, if we wanted to get rid of these reflections, these reflections here, uh, I could actually put a new use background on each one of those walls and not have that reflection happening. So just so you can see that, um, I'm just gonna grab these faces, make a new use background, and just tell it no, uh, no reflection and and that doesn't want to need a shadow, so we'll just turn that off too. Okay. So just render the bottom half. That's the only thing that's happening. So you see, now we have just this reflection and that reflection. And if I go to my alpha, good. Okay. So this is where our reflection is. So what I want to do is I want to save that image out because I have the reflection. So I'm going to go to my mental ray. Um, uh, quality, I'll crank this up, change my filter to length zoos, and then I'm just going to hit the render button, and then once it's done, I can just go to file and save that image out, okay? Now there's other ways we could set this up. Um, let's say we were doing a video or we weren't sure of where we wanted the ball. Um, basically, we have to set this up every time we render out shadows or render out reflections or render out color. Um, but if we had something else we wanted to do, we would have to uh, jump back in here and start playing with it. Okay, so there's other ways we could set this up. For now, we're doing it kind of the simplified way of just seeing how this process works and then later we'll get to efficiency. So I'm going to save the image. Um, this is going to go into my desktop, D drive, there, there, work, still composite, uh, source folder, and I'm going to make a source folder. Now these are the files that I'm going to give you so that you have them. So this will be an open EXR, sure, and we'll call this soccer ball. Cool. All right, so there's the reflection. I should have called it soccer ball reflection. That's what it is. Let me rename this. All right. So I need to save that again because I just already saved it. Okay. Uh, so there's the reflection. Now I need just the color without reflection. So let me grab this ball. And actually, we'll do the shadow. So I'm going to say um, visible and reflections off here. Visible and reflections off here. Cast shadows on. Cast shadows on. Okay, so now if I were to go through and I render this again, the screen should be completely black. Now sometimes you have to kind of persuade Maya to get out what you want. Um, no scene is ever going to be like carbon copy of every other scene you've done. There's going to be some differences and things that just don't work out. <clears throat> As a for instance, my used background shader didn't work on one of them, and then I had to remake it. So now if you look, you can see we have our shadows. If I, they don't show up here because this is black. The shadows are black. But if I go to my alpha, you can see there are my shadows. 
Now I could adjust the shadows because I think they're probably a bit too crisp. Okay. And I do want them to feather out a bit more. So I'm going to go to my light, which is here. I'm going to go down to my um, shadows. And under the use ray trace, I'm going to make a huge light angle, like uh, maybe 10 and then add 20 rays. And then what that should do is it should feather out those shadows. Now again, they're only going to show up in the alpha channel. So when I go into nuke, we'll have to remember that it's only showing up in the alpha channel. All right, so here we go now, if we look, you'll see that those are a bit feathered around the edges. So now we have some actual feathering that we could adjust those on. And I can make this light angle bigger, like if I made it 50, um, and render this out, it would be obviously a bit softer, even. All right, so I'm just going to save this. So we'll save the image. I'm going to call this soccer ball underscore shadow. There we go. And now what I want to do is I want to render out the lighting, so or the color. So I'm going to turn off cast shadows, and I'm going to turn on primary visibility. Turn off cast shadows, turn on primary visibility. So just so we can see what this is going to look like, this should just be the color information for this. And I'm still viewing the alpha, which is why this turned white, and now it's turning black. But we should see the soccer ball right there. There's one, and the other one's probably over here, yep. All right, so let's go to RGB, and there's a soccer ball, okay? So the soccer ball comes in as a, um, the material on it is a fawn. Uh, so it's got this ambient color on it, which is really like blowing it out. Um, you know, the coloring in this didn't really match the coloring in the other one. So that should be kind of adjusted too. Uh, also, the specularity on this seems really just off. There's not really a bump map on this. Um, I'm not sure. I thought there was a, a bump map on there. Source, sample, displacement. Let me see. Is that the displacement map in here? No, they're not using displacement. So they have a displacement, which gives it an actual bump. And then they have this, which is the bump map, and they're not even using that, okay? So what I want to do is I want to give this a little bit more realism. So I'm going to assign a new material to this, and I'm going to give it a Mia material X passes. And on here, I'm just going to remap the stuff. So on the color, I click the button, I click on file. I turn the filter type off and I go and find that one. So this should be on my desktop. Uh, texture. Okay, so there's the texture for it. And then under the bump, down here to bump, come down here to file. I set this to uh, maybe 0.25, turn that off, and find the normal map. All right. There's the texture again, and if I go up to my reflectivity and I just kind of play with the settings a bit, set that to one. All right, let me just get a little preview here of what this looks like. So I'm just going to grab the closer one. Uh, I'm going to save the image just so I can preview or compare what the old texture looked like to what the new one's looking like. And it looks pretty flat. That's the issue I don't really care for, is it just looks like crazy flat. All right. Where this actually looks more like a texture or a soccer ball. And see how blown out it is and then how that is. Okay. Now we are losing some of that lighting because there's no light coming from underneath to light this up. Uh, where because we had ambient on it, it just lights it from all over. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this light, I'm going to duplicate it and just rotate it facing upwards into that scene and I'm just going to turn shadows off and I'll turn the intensity <clears throat> maybe to 0.25 okay so again we'll save we'll preview and then we should see the entire soccer ball which we do okay and if it's too uh, bright on the bottom still I can come back into this intensity 
and maybe knock it down even further. Well, it is pretty overcast, so it's not like a sharp shadow. I just want to have some difference in top to bottom. All right, that seems a bit better. And it seems like it actually has, you know, some darkness under here where the light's hitting it from the top. All right, so now that we have the materials all set up a bit nicer, I'm just going to render this again. The full screen, make sure everything looks good, and we'll save that out. All right, there's that. So let's save the image. And we'll call this Soccer Ball Beauty. Beautiful. All right, so let's open up Nuke. Get a refill on our coffee, and then let's finish this up. All right, so here's where we left off last time. And you'll see that we have our... Oops. Uh, the boy there. The old lady is there. And that's Helen. And Colin. Alright, so now we need to get the soccer ball stuff in there. Now before we do that, you'll see that they loaded perfectly on mine. Um, they may not on yours. I'm going to come down here and hit S again. And just verify that my project directory is definitely set to where my project folder is, which it is. Um, and then I'm also going to go into my names here. And you'll see that my names for all my files, um, they're reading from the C drive. And in order for this project directory thing to work, what I need to do is find out where the project directory ends, so 2560. I need to erase everything from 2560 back. Okay. So what it's going to do now is that it'll just use that project directory as uh, the start point. So here's 2560. So it's a good habit to get into is to just start doing that as you come into your scene. So anything that you brought in, I'm going to erase that 2560 get back to there cool All right so let's go back here let's go to read uh, desktop you drive my stuff oops uh, source folder 3d items grab the three items here Okay, I hit L, marking him hit L, and he lays them out nicely. Um, let's look at them. So here's the beauty, so we just hit 1. Here's the reflection. Here's the shadow. I hit A so we can see the shadow. All right, so let's put all these together so that it makes a little bit more sense. Um, <clears throat> now, if I put these together as, like, this instance here, uh, what would happen is um, it would not lay correctly on the other one um, meaning that if I just took this merge and we can try it just to see so I make sure that it's uh, carrying over all that alpha channel information there you go so I'm just merging and merging that's it that's all I've done is merge and merge and you'll see merge and merge <laughs> it's like the Swedish show um, you'll see how everything kind of comes into the scene and there it is all right um, so I just merged all three of these together, beauty, reflection, then shadow, and then I'm gonna merge this into the mix and see where it ends up, okay? So I can just take this, drag it down here, and then merge, merge again, drop it there, and we'll see that they don't really line up right. Um, this one is way over here, and this one's way over there. So that's what I was talking about, not fitting correctly. Um, we have to, going back to the original, we lined it up with this original one, but then since then we've transformed and cropped the original one. So this is what we have to do is copy these transforms and crops, come down here, and then paste them. So I just said Control C to copy, Control V to paste, and then I'm just going to disconnect that, connect this here, connect that there, Okay, now you'll see that they got really tiny. Look how tiny little guy is. He's cute. Um, now the reason that is, is if we look at the original one, I double click it, you see the original one was 2048 by 1536. So it's actually a little bit different um, than the one that we sourced outside of Maya. So here's what we do is, let's scoot that over. Uh, I'm going to take this and I'm going to say reformat. 
So I'm popping in a reformat right here. And I'm going to reformat it to that 2048 by 1536. Okay, so basically um, this, I'm going to say, this shouldn't matter, but width. Um, so it reformats it, so it stretches it out to fit the original size. And then we're going to do all the transforms and crops and whatever else. And now you'll see that it's lined up a bit better. Now it still might be a bit off, um, but this is kind of the neat thing about this is that as it's set up the way it is, we can just kind of nudge it around. Now we'll see that this one is definitely cut off. Uh, it's probably in the exact spot, it's just where we lined it up was a bit cut off. So let me go back to my image plane here. And if I look, it's kind of lined up between these bricks. And that's where it is. So it did line it up perfectly. This one's just cut off here. So that's where I could come back into Maya and just kind of nudge this one into a better spot. Right, so I can see it. There we go. And then turn the background off again. Alright, so this is where um, the process of having to go back into Maya now and re-render out all those things could be a bit of a mess. So let me show you another way that we could do this um, so that I don't have to keep like remaking these things. So over here on the render layers, I'm going to make three render layers. Boom and boom and boom. Bum bum bum. So this one will be our beauty. This one will be our shadow or shadow, depending on how you say it. And this one will be our reflection. All right. So now anything we do to reflection and shadow and beauty um, affect all the other ones. Okay. So if I click on this upward light, I don't want that on shadow. Uh, or they don't reflect. Sorry. They don't re uh, affect the other ones. So if I do something in shadow, it doesn't affect beauty. It doesn't affect reflection. Um, I'm going to grab this light pointing up. I'm going to right click on shadow and say remove the selected objects. Okay. Same thing with reflection. Remove. We only used it for beauty, just so we can get a little bit more bounce in there. A little more bounce to the ounce. Um, and beauty should already be set up. This should be exactly what we want. On shadow, <clears throat> we wanted the ball here under render stats. We wanted the ball to cast shadows, but not have primary visibility. So you see how they turn orange? I'm assuming you said yes. So that will turn off uh, primary visibility and turn on cast shadows for this layer only. Okay. So then reflection, we want primary visibility off, visible in reflections on. Okay, and of course we want to make sure that this item here um, is casting shadows, or reflections, and it is. Okay, so now this, this, and this are all set up. So, buttons, um, I just go to my rendering, and I just say batch render. Okay. Now, because this isn't set, I'm just going to set this to my desktop. D5. Sort. Oops. Work. 3D Maya stuff. Okay. Let's create a default workspace. Sure. All right. So I'm just going to batch render this. And what it's going to do is it's going to go through and render out, boom, 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 all three of these so that it's now in a different position. So while it's doing that, I'm going to come to Nuke. And one thing we'll find out is that Nuke is extremely slow when you're doing a batch render for Maya. It hasn't started the slowness yet, but it's going to get there. All right, so first thing, let's organize this um, graph and just see what we've done so far. Um, all I've done is just um, over, just regular merge right on top of it. Just merge this in, merge that in, um, and then it's already set up. It already works. It looks great. Um, I just need to maybe organize this a bit better. Okay. Um, hmm. I think I want my B here. There. There. All right. Now, just like these, see how the A coming in, the B this way. Uh, because of this setup, I think I want to do. I think that makes more sense having it. I don't know. And see, undo's work in here, which is wonderful. All right, having it like that, you know, it makes sense for me to have it this way. That way I know where it's coming straight down and then coming over. All right. 
All right, so we merged the beauty and the reflection together. We merged the shadow um, into that. We reformatted it to resize it, and then we just apply the same transform and crop from above. All right, it sounds complicated, but um, just take a few minutes if you need to and just kind of like process what we just did. All right, now, <clears throat> in order to, for this to look correct, I need to play with it. So the beauty of this obviously doesn't match. This is pretty, pretty dark. So I can go after this beauty and just hit G, and it'll add a grade node. Okay, so we played with the grade node a little bit. Um, so you can see how I can come in here and just start playing with these values uh, until it's lined up. Now as I come here, you can see that it's definitely adjusting more than I want. So I'm going to go to the unpremultiply by mask and say alpha. And now it's only going to affect that. Now you'll also notice before we get a little bit further, oops, back to Maya, uh, is this already done? Nope, it just decided to crash. Um, so I'll play with that in a second. I um, mean, here, I want to verify that this looks the same. Okay, let me just go before the grade. I'll just delete that. All right, maybe it looks a little bit darker in here. Okay, now this came in as a linear image. Okay, because that's what the default set to for uh, EXR. But if I set it to sRGB, you can see it definitely gets darker. So uh, linear was the correct one. It's always good just to kind of check that, just to verify. All right, so now I'll go back to my grade. Um, I'll go back to my unpremultiply by alpha. And then I can just start adjusting what this looks like. Now I may need to come back into Maya and just play with uh, some of the colorations on it. Okay, maybe the lighting is a little bit too bright or whatever. So I'm going to multiply that. I think I need a saturation. It might be a little bit too saturated. I need more room. So hold control, click this, drag that whole thing up. Look at all that room I get. Cool. Okay. Again, it's nice to have it on another screen. Um, so it's over there. So I hit tab, type in saturation, and I get a saturation node that's in the mix. Let's desaturate this a bit. There we go. Now it's starting to look like it's actually in the scene. Okay, now that's just the color. I'm not worried about right now the shadow or the reflection. I'm just worried about the color. So here's the reflection. Um, on this merge here, I can take this mix. I just double click the merge. And you can see how I can just scroll this down and it makes it invisible. Okay, now it's making this um, A invisible and the B is overriding it. So if I hold, uh, click this and hold Shift X, it'll actually swap which one's on top. So you see that now this is the A, so that when I drag, that reflection goes away. Okay, now if I didn't want to do that, I'm going to just swap it back to where it was. I can go to here and add a grade. Scoop that up. Okay. And then I could take the, um, I don't want to adjust the RGB. What I want to adjust is the alpha. So you see I have a little slider here. And then I can pull this lift down, so I'm playing with the alpha there. I can pull the multiply down to adjust it. There we go. So maybe just a hair of a reflection, something like that, just so it looks like there's something else happening inside the scene there. Okay, and again we can kind of test it out, like what does it look like with and without. Um, so I'll just disable that reflection here and you can see the difference. Okay, so I think it definitely adds something to the scene, making it look a little bit more realistic. So I'm going to leave that like it is. Now we'll come down to Shadow. We'll add a grade node to this. I gave me a little bit more room. Just control, drag everything up. So now on this one, I'm going to go and just kind of pull that. Shadow doesn't seem to be doing anything. That's there. Uh, in this case, I may need to pre-multiply this shadow in order for this to actually take effect. Back to this. Back to this grade. Make sure that the grades are connected to it. Yes. Oh, it was affecting it. It was just taking a minute. There we go. So drop my grade back on there. Oops. See, we're only affecting RGB. I need to affect the alpha again. That's probably what I did wrong, too. And... 
There we go. So I'm just going to take a multiply down a bit. All right, so we still have a shadow there. Um, it's just not as dark as it was just by taking that multiply down. It's weird that when the shadow's not there, the ball floats. <laughs> Well, it looks good. All right, so I'll scoot that up. And there we go. All right, so let me jump back to Maya and figure out why this thing crapped out on me. So I'm going to save my scene. Oh, uh, I didn't pick a camera. That could be why it didn't like that. So go back to my common tab. Perspective 2. Uh, open the XR. Zips. Name dot extension. Sure, 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 sure. Render. All right, so it uh, did not want to batch render, so I just went through and re-rendered each one. <clears throat> so I was able to, I clicked on reflection, hit the render button, saved it, went to shadow, hit render, saved it, went to beauty, went to render, saved it. Um, I could have rebooted and done all that, but for what I'm doing here, it's not a huge deal. So now I'm just going through and just double clicking and reloading each one of those. So you see now this ball is definitely more in the forefront. Um, and you can see that because it's a little bit closer, maybe it's reflection now I'm seeing is a little bit more stronger than I would like. So I'm just gonna take that, multiply down some more, just so it's not as prevalent, 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 covalent, covalent bonds. All right, so there we go. All right, now again, we can keep playing with this and tweaking it as much as we want. Um, so here's that color adjustment. Okay, now this one should be maybe a little bit more orange than the other one. So I could always do this too. I could always do a, um, uh, you don't know what everything's called, so you can go over here and see. This is where we would adjust colors or uh, we would wait for Nuke to wake up. There it is. Um, so we can go to Hue Shift, Hue Correct, um, and these would allow us to adjust some of those. So let's say this um, ball back here, I want to be a bit more orange. All right, so let me just slide this in here after the saturation. Okay, so I'm gonna take this and I'm just going to um, uh, overly saturate it a bit. There we go. All right, so I'm saturating this a bit more just to kind of show you that it is definitely orange, okay? Now what I don't want to do is I don't want that to affect this one. I only want to affect that one. So we used rotos before, like up here. I can use rotos down here. These little swatchy things on the right is where we can input a mask. So if I just hit O for Othello, um, just out in the open, so it's just kind of floating here. And if you accidentally put it in the wrong spot, just delete it. Click in nowhere and hit O. Um, you can drag this hue shift mask onto the roto. All right. So right now everything went black because there's nothing. There's no mask. So now all I have to do is just draw a mask around here, and you'll see that now that only affects that area. Close the properties. And so you'll see very easily I can create these individual masks that will affect just those areas. So now I can go back to my hue shift and just kind of pull that down a bit. So it's still a bit orange, but it's not as orange. Okay. Uh, let's go back to this and just organize this a little bit further. Okay, there we go. And I may want to do a, um, a grade drop that here and I'm just gonna focus on this one so um, I actually want a little bit more blue so here's another way we could do this is you see how we have red greens and blues so if I turn the red and green off I could adjust the blue of that okay so this one's a little bit more blue this one's a little bit more orange now again I don't want to affect everything I click this and hit D and you can see how it's affecting both of them all right so I Click off, hit O to create another roto, drag the little mask handle to the roto shape, and then I just marquee what I want in that mask. And then close. 
Okay, so now we can see these are from the same render. This one's a little bit uh, orangey. This one's a little bit blue. And now that's looking like it's actually like in the scene a bit better. Okay, very, very cool. All right, so now we have our still all done. Um, apart from just some correction things we could add to the bottom of this. Let's pull that over. Pull that there. There we go. And maybe we'll pull this over a bit. And nudge that up a bit. All right. So all of this stuff here, that's our CG uh, implementation. So let's add a backdrop. And you can see we're kind of bumping into this other one. So just, oops, and we stole it. <laughs> um, all right, so you're not going with us. Just shift click the deselect that one. All right, so let's double click this backdrop. 3D integration. Oh, you can't start it with a three. Um, CG integration. Everything we're doing is CG. Well, more or less. Um, CG. I can put 3D here. Alright. So that's that. Um, yeah, so that's pretty good. So let's uh, write this out. So <clears throat> we read our first file in. We read all these files in to get them in here. So now we're going to write the files out. So we hit tab. We find the write node. It's right next to the write brothers. And we go over here to file, and we have to specify where it's going to go. So I'm just going to go back to my still composite. I'm just going to put my um, output folder. And I'm going to call this uh, Sarcona Still Composite. Composite, yep. And then you have to give it an extension. So TIF, so I put a .TIF. If I don't put the .TIF, it doesn't know what kind of file I'm saving it as. Okay. And when I type that, it gives me this, TIFF. So if I did want to change it, I could change it here, but you still have to give it something. Then we hit render, and then we hit OK. All right. And now just to um, see what that's looking like, I like to open it in Photoshop. Oops, there it goes. Because I want to see um, if outside the program something has changed. Because sometimes you'll get just some weird funkiness that happens um, post composite. Come on. 2560 work, still composite, uh, output. There it is. And it may ask stuff about an alpha channel. If we do, we just say hit ignore. All right, so now we can look at this in Photoshop and see you know what it's looking like. Um, if we needed adjustments, we could jump back in the nuke, adjust those things, and then pop back in here. We could also do some finishing stuff in here. Like sometimes I want to go through and have that. Um, maybe duplicate this. I'm going to add a mask to this. And I'm just putting a big black mask on here. And then I'm going to go to, you can't see it, let me just alt click. Uh, this is a layer mask, and I'm just going to go through my blur and say Gaussian blur and just blur this like crazy, like, like that. Okay. So now this is essentially just on top of it, but because it looks like the same thing, there's no difference. But if I set this to multiply, you'll see how now the edges are a bit darker and the inside is a little bit lighter. So this actually gives us a little, uh, it's called a vignette if you've never heard that term before um, but it gives us a nice kind of framing to our view here it is before kind of plain boring looks like a photo and then here we're actually kind of framing this a bit better kind of bringing people's eye into the center of the image uh, which is typically what we'd want to do um, so I like to do those in here you could also do that inside of nuke um, you can actually have just a vignette node at the very bottom just so you can see that I'm gonna add a constant I'm sorry, not a constant. I'm going to add a roto. There we go. And I'm going to merge. So just like I did in Photoshop, we have two layers here. One's a multiply, one's a regular. Uh, I'm going to take this last node here, and I'm going to merge it into itself. It's weird, but that's what I'm going to do. So this is going to go here. And I need to merge it onto itself. Now, if I take this and put it there, you'll see we have two lines right on top of each other. So I'm going to hold Control and drag out this little dot that lets you separate stuff. Pull it over there. 
And if I take this B here, and I look at this merge, it looks like the same, just like Photoshop. When I set it to multiply, you can see how dark it gets. And then all I'm doing is the same tip or trick we used with the other one. I'm going to use this mask over here. So I drag this mask there. And I'm just going to draw a shape. And I could use a feather or a blur inside of here too. Um, but what I like to do is just take these little arms and just pull the arms off. Okay, and I pull it all the way off the screen. And what that does is it feathers that mask. Now you'll also notice that oops, uh, it's backwards. So the dark spots in the middle and the light spots on the outside. Well, most of these tools have an invert. So we just have to go here where it says invert and invert it. Okay, close that. And then just kind of organize ourselves. So just move this over. Now again, this is, <clears throat> it looks crazy confusing, but the cool thing is, is that once this is set up, um, I don't have to play with this again. So if I came into Photoshop and, or, and realized something was off um, after I did all this stuff, um, I would have to go back in and redo this whole thing here. Remake the mask, repop it on here. With Nuke, it's already in the chain. So whatever my end result ends up being here, it's automatically going to add in that roto or that vignette right at the end okay so i could just write this out and just hit render and be done there it is so i can close that um actually let me just open up the other one update there we go so it's updating the uh current one and there it is so it looks pretty much the same that it did in the other one uh, some people are just more comfortable in Photoshop and they like to play with it, uh, but I encourage you to kind of play inside Nuke to create this node graph because just like you saw, if something in 3D changes, we update these files and everything falls right into place. Uh, if our um, Colin changes, it updates right in place. Our Helen updates right in place. The sky, anything. Any of these things that we can change um, on the fly and everything will just update. If I decide I want a different spot of that background, I double click my transform for it, and I just grab a different section, and now I have a completely different background here. If I decide I want to get rid of these, I can just go through uh, here's my luminance, here's my road. Um, I can just go to a, a roto right here. I'll just crop off that whole thing. There we go. So that didn't crop it out yet because I have to invert it. Okay. Uh, not invert it, sorry. I have to go here and say that I want to use this as a negative alpha. Okay. So I just made an alpha and now I just subtracted that alpha from that mix. And now you can see how easily I can just erase parts of this image using a roto. And now I don't have to worry about those white lines if I saw any white lines. Um, and everything from all the way down here to that vignette is all still locked in. So if the boy changes, if the girl changes, if I want to add someone else in the mix, all that stuff doesn't have to be redone. It's just a matter of dropping it in here and placing it where it needs to be. Um, I do think that that back soccer ball could use a little bit of feathering, a little bit of fuzz. It's a little bit too clear. Um, so we go to our CG stuff, which is right here. I have a little bit of room. I can scoot that up. Okay, I'm going to add a defocus. And you'll see how it softened that, maybe a little too much, maybe 0.5 here. Again, we disable it, re-enable it so we can see what it looks like. There we go. I mean, it's very subtle of how much fuzz I put on it. <clears throat> Again, I don't want that to be on the front ball. Um, I do have this roto shape here. So if I wanted to, I can take this. It's hard to select as an arrow. Pull that off for a second. 
Uh, I can take this defocus and drag it up to here, this mask. Just drop that back into the mix. And so now I'm using essentially the same mask that I created up here. I could have also copy and pasted. That would have been acceptable too. And there's other ways that I could link. Um, but just so you can see that we can reuse these things over and over again. So this roto was for the front ball. This roto is for the back ball. And we're just reusing that so that this is blurry. This is not. Okay. And again, I could go back to the right. I hit render. I hit OK. And now all the settings that I just changed are now re-rendered out without having to go through and redo another vignette onto that item. Um, it's a very, very cool workflow. It's just a matter of getting used to it, getting comfortable with it. All right. So that's going to conclude our still composite. Hopefully you have some... Uh, basic knowledge of Nuke and some of the interfaces, some of the nodes that we're going to be um, constantly using, these re, uh, rotos and merges, writes and reads, grades and pre-multiplies, reformats, transforms, all of these we're going to be reusing uh, pretty much throughout all of our projects. Um, so if you need to, go through the project again, watch the video a couple times, um, tell your dog what you're doing. Anything that helps you soak this information in, that's what you want to do. Um, you could even go in after the fact with some other pieces of artwork and you could like board up the windows or you could change the windows or you could put graffiti on the walls, okay? Uh, lots of different things you could do to enhance this image. All right, so that's where we're going to end it.